Marshall. And while I was saying no, I just discovered my dress is inside out. <laughs> I am going to talk to you about discovering my mother's love life in Randolph, Ooh. New Hampshire. And I'm going to cast around her picture. Just keep touching the phone so it doesn't go to sleep. So you can see how pretty she was. Now, my mother in New Jersey went to an all-female school, K through 12, and then she went to Mount Holyoke, which was all-female, for college. So where did she meet men? <laughs> she spent every summer in Randolph. <laughs> and I didn't think much about this when I was a child, and um, you know, I didn't know, think of my mother as having had a love life before she was married. And then later, my father died, and my mother had dementia, and she actually couldn't remember my father. And these names started coming up. John Sperry, Alan Horton, and Doug Stoll. And John Sperry was a guy that she saw here in Randolph in high school when they were still staying at the hotels, I think. And he actually wrote us a letter while my mother was in dementia asking her to come hiking with him in Randolph for old time's sake. <laughs> now, my mom had advanced Alzheimer's, no sense of the spine, so she could hardly walk, and she was legally blind. So I don't think she was going to go hiking in Randolph. And I wondered about this guy, is he really still in good enough shape to go hiking? But after my mother died, he wrote me, he became my pen pal, and we became friends on Facebook, and I saw pictures of him hiking in the Cascades until he was in his 90s. And my dad died when he was 81. My mother did not marry her healthiest suitor. <laughs> <laughs> Then after my mom died, I got a principal role in the charades. Now that's rare, I'm usually in the ensemble, I don't usually get a principal role. But while I was up there, Alan Horton, who was still here, spotted me. And he turned to his sister, Alice Tibbetts, who happened to live in Madison, as my mother did. And he asked her, who was that? People have always told me I look like my mom. And she said, that's Heffy's daughter. And he came up to me afterwards a couple of times. And he assured me that he was very happy with his wife. <laughs> uh, but that there was an intensity to his gaze that made me know that he still had feelings for my mother. And I found out later that he actually proposed to her. And she never declined, but she just couldn't make up her mind. Um, my father proposed to her four years before she married him. I, I don't know if Alan Horton waited that long. <laughs> um, and so then the third one, Doug Stoll, was actually not a Randolph person. He was the brother of a friend of hers from Mount Holyoke, for the all-female college she went to. And, but he went to Dartmouth, which is in New Hampshire, the source of all men. <laughs> and I found out about Dartmouth uh, when I was a child we were driving up from Connecticut or New York and we passed through Dartmouth and we stopped and I said oh this is a beautiful place I think I'd like to go to college here my mom had to be the heavy and say um, no it's all male but that changed and I went there and my mom said well, why would you go to Dartmouth they fought on the side of the British and the Revolutionary War, and they've been like that ever since. <laughs> and it was only later that I found out that Doug Stoll, who was the man who really broke her heart, went to school there. And I have to think that there must have been an intensity to my mother's gaze when she looked at the campus that I only noticed subliminally that made me want to go there. I loved it, by the way, and I love the fact that it was near Randolph, except because I didn't have a car, I could never get here, and it is actually a two hours drive. <laughs> but so far, Randolph has not been the source of all men for me. 